Well, hi gentlemen, greetings from Slovakia. I'm up a mountain, it's called Hopox in Slovakia, and I've been here with a couple of day game dudes. Friends have contacted me from London. One of the great things about this sort of secret society is you've got fellow dudes with fellow interests outside dating and chasing women around the park who, you know, just touch base out of nowhere and suggest a skiing jolly, and off we go. The three of us have been motoring around uh, uh, quite a good mountain actually which isn't a million miles from Poland I only just nipped across the border into, into Slovakia didn't need to show any passports or anything just drove across the border and spent a lovely few days a long weekend skiing here in the mountains I am gonna just uh, today focus on some comments it's been a long time since I've posted replied to comments in the thread and there are plenty of them especially since I did the Tom Torero tribute which is actually probably pretty much a year ago now it's uh, pretty much the anniversary of, of Tom Torero's death so I'm going to run through in the cozy comfort of this beautiful stone clad uh, wooden laid um, what shall I call it Slovakian country hotel lodge and run through a few comments so here we go is the first one which i like is uh, basically i bought your audio book i have to say i'm enjoying it i'm interested in astrology and i'm curious as to what sign you are because you are very articulate and intelligent no worries if you don't want to reveal it but thanks for the amazing content i've had so many really positive reviews i don't dock to the reviews occasionally i take out really absolutely crazy random ones but i try to on balance to leave you know views that have a contrary point of view uh, so don't think i'm what's the word um heavily pruning what gets posted on this channel i'm a taurus i'm a bull so i'm stubborn and stupid i'll stick at things even in the face of i'm the sort of person who pushes against a locked door uh very important for taurians so i understand from my very limited understanding of astrology to take a step back and just think carefully and ask themselves a question perhaps it'd be better to pull the locked door than to push it or to find a key uh some lovely posts here on on the tribute uh, this is sort of seven eight months ago uh, so thank you very much quite international flavor chat from uh, this is one of the fantastic things isn't it the international nature of what we up what we're up to it's an absolutely universal thing learning how to be good with and around women uh, good um, uh, socially calibrated around every human being frankly but obviously where women are concerned there's a particular different uh, uh, way of uh, forming romantic connections. Great, great to hear you're back approaching and done with Tinder. Well, uh, yes, I, I did did three Tinder approaches for my book a few years ago, and then during lockdown, just really as part of the research and to give it some texture, 52 first dates, ka-ching. Uh, which I'm hoping in due course to produce an audiobook from because it's a great collection, an anthology of dating, first dating stories. I had some really interesting adventures. I've actually, with lockdown, I did go back into Tinder. Again, I'm just of, of a mind that it is such a big thing. So many people are basically, so many guys, women are just relying on that in terms of uh, generating dates. Well, so I think, it, you know, it's good to, to take a global view on how guys are going about de generating dates. My conclusions about Tinder is it can work, especially in certain countries. Yeah, if you go east, it can be absolutely quite productive. Uh, but, 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 approaching girls during the daytime or, or nighttime, cold approaching is the king. Uh, especially in, in you know situations like coffee shops I think and uh, it gives you the therapy that uh, every guy needs the oxygen that guys need I said in my tribute that I thought that if it had been for the coronavirus Tom Trero might still be with us because that is such an important part of particularly a lone wolf who's traveling across the world and meeting strangers on a daily basis to have that kind of 
um, withdrawn, it, it puts a lot of mental pressure on a dude. So that's the wonderful thing about the day game and why it's the king. Nevertheless, um, uh, the, the, the problem with Tinder is that swiping bit, isn't it? Uh, so I've cunningly outsourced that. So I just, I've got my profile now. Uh, look, I don't want to muck about texting. Let's hook up. What's your phone number? And I've put that in the profile. Uh, and uh, my Ukrainian just basically has an initial exchange with them and then <laughs> bounces me a phone number and the profile and the photos. And I'll take it from there. It's it'd be quite a fun an experiment because it's taken all the pressure all the all the, the it, it brings you down it brings you down uh swiping right and swiping left unless you really are a geek who's into that sort of a thing yeah here's a, a um a chap who says day game is not about getting girls it's about keeping your vibe up keeping enthusiastic in life as tom once stated day game is a therapy and yes it's the way to get out of your head and sculpt yourself as you really genuinely want to be um, he says, I would say it's the key to freedom. And certainly when you are engaged with the world like this, you do feel very free of limitations. And that's one of the big kind of, what's the word? Not the elephant in the room exactly, but that's the unsung, unspoken, un, um, sort of subconscious, subtle benefits of this stuff is the way it is stripping out your limitations. And actually it's men big part of us doing this is actually not in order to have sex or not even in order to get a girlfriend or a wife necessarily but because we don't like living in a limited world yeah we don't like being like goldfish there's some fish here in a tank a lot of us spend our lives in a fish tank not engaging with the people who are passing us by on a daily basis and i mean goodness gracious it's the most healthy natural thing in the world that you can do is like strike up a conversation with somebody and give them a smile and if they're an attractive girl, flirt with them and take your telephone number. Guys seem to be enjoying the book, which is great. Thank you for that. The audio version. <clears throat> the Ryan Giggs trials. There's a comment here on... I did a, a three-episode series on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. I thought it was absolutely fascinating. I'm a lawyer. It's a crossover between women and dating and the law for me. So I, th I, um, I thought it was a really good... Uh, vlog series although I didn't anybody watched it I think it was I was, I was really proud of it uh, he, he says are you following the Ryan Giggs trial too and that he enjoyed these videos it seems that Ryan Giggs was charged and tried for headbutting a, 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 an ex-girlfriend partner and for controlling behavior and perhaps other assaults and so on and so forth so it has got obviously some resonance with the Johnny Depp trial unfortunately it has the jury couldn't reach a verdict um, it's tricky in this area it really is uh, reaching verdicts where you've just got two people and one person saying one thing and one person saying the other um, so I'm afraid yeah I can't answer that question but I, I, I wait for the retrial with bated breath here's a nice long one about Tom um, and he talks about how when I see all the cringy YouTube pickup artists here who charge a lot for their programs, I always think he could have made a lot of money with the skills he had. Um, I, met, may, I found nobody matching his skills. Um, I think that was, well, that was what attracted me to Tom initially. And when I met him thereafter, it was clear that he came from a place, a motive of wanting to help guys, wanting to get better at this stuff himself, really master it, of course, um, but that he was never looking to ka -ching. Uh, you know and make a, a very profitable business he earned good money on it for a while and when he felt that he'd given all he'd give he'd given all he could give and he'd, he'd said all that he felt could be said on the topic he changed careers and trained as a ski instructor here's an interesting one about tom invariably there's a lot about tom here Portrait of a man who was no longer advocating for keeping a record of women you approach and have sex with, but for a style of life of freedom. Yes, I think that it is impossible. Yet, I think it is impossible to ignore that most of his life he treated women not as potential partners for life, but objects to have fun for a while and move on. He must have felt empty after a while. We all need human, uh, meaningful relationships. Uh, that's you know a very fair point. Uh, I was only discussing it with a couple of buddies in front of the fire uh, here um, night before last. That 
there, there is it's interesting cause it's a bit like a sport like being a footballer or something like that if you it's got a limited shelf life it feels it feels like a lot of guys who get into it professionally and make it their main focus they need to be thinking of an extra strategy before they get in because you know it can get to a point where yes you do genuinely feel like you've had some adventures you've been through your right of passage and you know you're then out on a limb and you actually realize that real uh, human connection communication and partnership and relationship and companionship um, with a member of the opposite sex is big and it don't it don't go away it was interesting we were looking at Charles Bukowski that American writer he was a bit of an adventurer a bit of a seducer but uh, he eventually found someone at the age of 56 um, and they got married and um, she was with him until his death so uh, yep uh, well said and uh, think carefully if you're going to get into this stuff and make it a bit of a main focus especially if you're going to build a business around it and a, and a career around it that you've been thinking ahead about how you're going to um, what's the word transition into uh, what every uh, lone wolf uh, and Tom is it, it's a very good illustration of this point uh, ultimately every lone wolf wants to you know get uh, a she-wolf and a family of little wolves and find a cave and stay there looking good man ram those Ukrainian ladies like a gentleman <laughs> yep okay doing my best thank you very much for that comment yeah Uncle Tom used to say the first one is the worst one that is so true and as we're getting back into the saddle after you know a cold wintry period um, and we're getting back out into the, the streets and the bars and the coffee shops it can just seem like the glass ceiling is there again you know the socially conditioned glass ceiling is there again you kind of feel like everything that you learn and all that progress that you made <gasps> you know it feels like a distant memory in the rear view mirror well actually the truth is <laughs> you just need to bang your head against the glass ceiling as it were um, it's not a particularly good analogy you need to break the kind of the frost yeah you need to break the ice uh, and actually once the ice is broken the water's flowing beneath powerfully beneath and you uh, realize that you haven't forgotten any of it and in fact it's just like getting back on a rusty old bike you haven't ridden for a couple of years after a couple of goes you're back to how you were so take confidence from that yes the first one is the worst one just get it out of the way Put in some nice turns for the camera. Lovely. Lovely. There we go. Got a, a bunch of videos about John Matrix. Yeah, the reason that I did that dating course in September September last year and in November was because I had him and Tim Powers equally important in duo there um, back in business as it were uh, and uh, he's been saying some really interesting things particularly around the storytelling aspect of, of street approach that um, I, I, I recommend to you the interviews and the podcasts that I've done with John uh, and with Tim uh, which you'll easily find on the channel there um, yeah nice note here on John Matrix's advi advice on storytelling one of the big problems that uh, kind of intermediate guys uh, experience or beginners is that they run a routine uh, and they're not sharing anything of themselves a girl wants a guy who's confident enough to talk about himself not on a date where he's just talking about his job and his you know Porsche and his um, impressive list of hobbies and so on but actually talking about stories from his own life you would be amazed at how much mileage you can get out with a simple get out with a simple story get out of a simple story 
uh, uh, for example, um, I've been in shops where I've said to a girl, um, you know, you look very fashionable. Uh, what are you shopping for? Um, and, and then I end up saying I actually was a male model when I was a kid, um, which is bizarrely true. My mother and sisters put me on the catwalk when I was about eight. I had a, I had, I had a big blonde um, bob, big blue eyes. I was a very cute eight-year-old, believe it or not. Um, and you can see, or you can already see how much mileage you can get out of telling a story like that about your childhood past. It's funny, it's real, there's no question that you're, it's, it's sincere. So storytelling could be, can be, is a great way of grounding uh, a conversation, yeah? Uh, so that the girl doesn't go home thinking you're some sketchy pickup artist. You're not a sketchy pickup artist. People might use that label against you. You're a guy who's learning skills socially uh, and flirt, uh, uh, so as to make yourself better with women and uh, make romantic connections. Don't start sticking labels left, right and centre. Got one here that says avoid marriage. Stay open so you don't get bent over by the British court system. Although as a lawyer that would be interesting to see how I defended myself in the family court. Well I think what you're saying here is I, I don't believe in uh, avoiding marriage I actually think that guys who do this stuff are better equipped for marriage than the uh, average run of the world yeah I think that it almost it's your duty to get into a long-term relationship because you now understand the nature of um, the dynamic between men and women the importance of men holding the frame, whether it's in the street, on a date, or in marriage. I think, and I remember Tom Torero telling me this when I asked him, I remember it was in Dotted Terrasse, in a shopping centre in Warsaw, goodness knows, five, six years ago, and I was like, Tom, you know, this little five-step thing, or whatever it was he was teaching me about approach, it's just a little trick to get you into opening up conversations and being flirtatious with girls isn't it and he was like actually Alex you could say there's a good argument to say that it's a microcosm of what a relationship is like a long term relationship is like so although on the one hand it is just a simple hack to get um, dating on the other hand if you you know really reflect deeply on it uh, and really absorb the message and the meaning of what it is that we do there are some really important life lessons in terms of managing relationships you see it don't you everywhere and, in, and, and, and isn't it true that so often the first few steps in any uh, new relationship romantic or otherwise set the tone and um, so if you're holding the frame if you're leading um, from the very outset it's quite likely that that will be the pattern throughout a lifetime relationship I'm no expert but um, I, I, I therefore uh, in a way although I acknowledge that the, uh, the, the, the legal system is against the, the men and I deal with a lot of um, cases where men are basically just you know they're cut out by the wives they can't see the children they try to address the matter in court the system is against them yeah um, and it's, it's a really unhappy situation for the, the child because the child never gets to have a proper relationship with the father the wife is being selfish and all that happens is when they reach a certain age the child turns on the mother and then wants the relationship with the father that they never had particularly with girls probably both in my experience here's an interesting one am i happy to be on the planet yes i am says the man who killed himself at 40 tom i miss you uh, this was a comment on valentine's vlog that tom did i was on that ski trip with him actually uh it is interesting it is interesting point um um you know maybe um look all that you're watching here for example is a guy who's good at vlogging okay uh probably you can ascertain i have some kind of level of knowledge um although it doesn't feel like that a lot of the time it's actually more of a, a skill 
you know, everyone has different skill sets in life, don't you? I have a, a, a skill around presentation, uh, vlogging, uh, perhaps with my legal training about putting, you know, ideas forward coherently, um, you know, telling stories. I'm creative as well. Uh, and I'm a writer, so I just simply use those skills uh, in order to run a YouTube channel. I'm passionate about the topic and I'm sharing my knowledge, but don't therefore think that any of these vloggers, Tom, me, Jordan Peterson, um, whoever, are necessarily got their own lives sorted, yeah? Uh, this is just like something, it goes without saying, doesn't it? Don't therefore start to idolise people that you're watching on YouTube. Be really careful about that, yeah? Um, if it's resonating with you, it's because you already know the knowledge yourself. You're probably wiser and smarter than you think. Uh, so don't go around putting people on pedestals, yeah? Here's one a philosophical social comment. All men in Western civilization are depressed and filled with anxiety, especially white men. We are all being psychologically and mentally bullied by woke culture, by our toxic leftist system. Tom was a victim of this bullying in the end, in my opinion. <sighs> wow. This is a comment on, I posted a depression, anxiety and stress podcast number six from uh, Tom's back catalogue after I did my tribute, because I've referred to it in the tribute. Whoa. You know what? If Tom was here now, he would probably smile, laugh, roll his eyes, because um, that's something I probably said to him, uh, and say, you know what, Alex, just don't go down the manosphere hole. Don't become that person who is grinding an axe, is feeling uh, is part of a victimized minority. Um, it, it, you know, it is constantly bemoaning the state of the world, um, hating the woke culture that's descended upon us. I know it's a big ask. I know, I know, I know. And uh, it's good to have a good moan and a grumble or a proper discussion over a beer with friends once in a while. But be careful you're not taking it in because that is uh, really dangerous in terms of your vibe. When you're when you're round woman, um, you know you can see how it can make you it, 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 it can make you approach the uh, world of women and dating from the point of view of um, the odds are stacked against me. If I approach a woman on Oxford Street, you know what? I bet she'll have snap at me uh, and um, turn on turn. Uh, uh, I spoke to a guy on Skype not so long ago on a date a girl was actually recording the date because he'd approached her in the street um, you know meaning to out him on Facebook or whatever as a sketchy pickup artist if you identify w with yourself as a, a white male who's a victim of woke culture that is not going to help your vibe on the street or on dates might be true but it's not going to help you and if you're following this channel if you're into this stuff it's just simply about getting attractive girls into your life period so uh that's it for now i hope um i've done justice to some of those comments i know that there are probably plenty more that i haven't don't forget that you can always email me. You're more likely to get a response if you email. I won't engage in lengthy debate, but I'm more likely to read an email than I am necessarily to uh, to reply to a comment, basically. And I'll, and, and I'll give you a response, although so be patient. It may not be instantaneous. Okay, well, that being said... Um, Strap on your balls, guys, now that we've got through the winter slump and got through Christmas. Uh, it's time to open up your eyes, start to plan ahead, perhaps think about a dating course with yours truly. And what better way of getting your vibe up, getting in the mood, than listening to uh, Too Late Mate on Audible. 
Bye for now.